Hello, friends of the pod and potential new listeners out there. Uh, this is Des Linden here with another episode of Nobody Asked Us with Des and Kara, presented by TCS. Kara Goucher, how's it going? Well, I my <laughs> mood has turned around substantially because I have this, which is don't, my child's don't passport. Show those numbers. I'm not. I'm showing the yeah. backside. Okay. Um, I have been really stressed the last couple of weeks and I've been trying to put my finger on like, what is it? And I think part of it is one of my family members has been really sick and it was like scary, unknown. And and she finally has a diagnosis. And although it's not great, it's way better than what it could have been. So I, I, but, and I, but that's, I've been carrying around a lot of stress with that. And then also I've been doing a lot of interviews because the day that this pod comes out, paperback of Longest Race comes out. And I think I was like, and and a lot of people have wanted to talk about the abuse side and Uh I'm fine doing that. But I think like the combination of like this person being sick and then like me Uh talking about this sad stuff, I think it has kind of put me in a funk. So then Sunday night, Adam goes to get our passports out for this trip that we we booked in December that we've (laughs) all been looking forward to that. It was like, mom's not going to travel. We're all going to be together, all this stuff. And Colt's passport's expired because, you know. He got it in 2017 and he's a kid and they run out every five years. And so it led to this like super panic week where we tried to get in Monday. They had no appointments. Because he's a minor, both parents have to take him to the passport agency. And because he's a minor, you can't have someone else like do it for you. And I talked to this guy on Monday and he's like, well, actually there's like, there is a loophole. You can get this form and fill it out and get it notarized. Mm -hmm. And that way your husband can take your son and you don't have to be there because I... I had to go to bed. I didn't have to, but I had this book event and it was sold out. 300 people bought my book, right? And it's like, I don't want to be like, sorry guys, I'm an idiot and I didn't renew my (laughs) son's password because I got to go on vacation that even though it's like super important that we spend this time together, but whatever. So I, on Monday, I get this form, I print it off, I fill it out. I go to three different places before someone's actually in the office that can notarize. I give it to Adam. I print off all the other documents. I'm feeling so good about myself. I go to Bend. Wednesday morning, Elise Kopecky, who is the best-selling author herself of cookbooks, uh, Run Fast, Eat Slow, she and I are running and my Apple Watch rings and it's Adam and he goes, you fucked up. Oh. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Not the message <laughs> Which you want. apologized for later, but he was just like, you filled out the form wrong. Like I filled it out that I was giving Colt permission to get a passport, but I was supposed to fill it out for Adam to have permission to get Colt the passport. <laughs> So they're talking to this lady and she's nice. And she's like, you guys can come back tomorrow morning, but I don't know that we're going to be able to turn it around in time. So I've, d- I've just had all this rest. And then again, someone on, on Instagram reminded me that this is first world problems. Of course it is. Like I realize that. I realize that. I, I get it, but I'm still very stressed, you know? So Colt's phone got stolen and it's that was really stressful because Cole had a situation when he was younger. I'm not going to give too much detail because I don't want anyone to know who it was, but he was at a birthday party and got locked in a dog crate and left alone for a long time. And after that, that caused anxiety in him. So he's always had a phone. And and when he was little, he would just walk into someone's house and say, what's your Wi-Fi? And it would hook up to the Wi-Fi. And it was basically like a blanket. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, Yeah, for sure. It's just like, a you know, he never used it. Anyway, now he does have a phone. And it was stolen out of his backpack and it was turned off one minute after the bell rang. So we couldn't locate like where it was. And it's like, I know it's a phone. I know it's just a phone. I do understand that. But it's like this violation to him a little bit of like someone went into my stuff and stole this. And even though he rarely reaches out to us during the day anymore, it's still like his little lifeline, right? And so he was really upset. He also felt irresponsible, even though he wasn't. It was stolen. And so that was stressful. We And they we haven't found the phone, obviously, and we're going to get him a new one. But um, then I think because of all this stress, <laughs> I did 800 meter repeats at Colt's PR pace. All right. And then I couldn't go. walk. But then I couldn't walk <laughs> afterwards. And I swear it's due to like, I'm just, cortisol is just like, you know, exploding out of my body. So I have this patellar tendon thing that came out of nowhere. And I I promise you it's because of all the stress. So anyway, I understand that all these are first world problems. My family member is going to be okay. Um, We have the passport. We're getting a new phone. My knee actually is kind of feels better. And I think a lot of it is because I'm just like breathing again. Relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's my story. (laughs) 
And, Did you ever think about yeah. you're like maybe we should just leave Colt at home? Just oh, go. I, I was <laughs> like kind of joking when I was in Bend. I was like, I actually really need this trip because I have a hard time um, like disconnecting. Yeah, you know, like someone can still get a hold of me, and because you know, you and I, like, yeah, you're still a professional athlete, but you also have a job of like representing yourself and doing the podcast and all these things, so you are constantly still available. You know what I mean? Like, there is no, it's five p.m. and I'm done. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I have a really hard time. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. I'm like always on, and the one thing that I have really worked really hard on is when I'm with alone with my son and husband. I really am like, no, I'm, I can't, I have to have this time with them and it cannot be interrupted. And so I've been, you know, I've been looking forward to this so much. And yeah, I was joking in bed and I was like, well, I guess Adam's going to have to stay home with Colt because I'm going. I need this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, he but seems like a mature out. kid. I think he would have been fine by himself. Maybe throw a little party, nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing crazy. And neighbors, probably right? Way too many fruit snacks. Yeah, no, <laughs> it would have been fine. Oh yeah. God. So anyway. I'm just exhausted, but feeling a lot better. And when this podcast comes out, I'm going to be at the beach. I love it. I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> How was the okay, Bend so- event? I'm, I'm, going right, I'm going right into my next question. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it was great. It was awesome. And I, Lauren Fleshman actually was the moderator and it was super fun. And Lauren and I have known each other for so long and like, I was actually thinking about this. I think I've known her since... 2000. That's crazy. But it's, you know, it's always, we've always crossed paths, whether it's competition or our sponsors or this or that. But um, I had so much fun. I feel like we both kind of let our guard down a little bit and it was a short trip, but it was awesome. The audience was awesome. Lauren and I went out after we were, we were both like doing the Kara and Des thing. We were just going to get takeout and go home. Like she lives <laughs> right there. And then we ended up eating our takeout together in the restaurant. So oh, it was really fun, you. really fulfilling trip. Everything about it was magical until the next morning when Adam called me and told me I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. But no, it was great. And Bend is such a cool place. You know, I've, that's only the second time I've been there, but it's not that big of a town, but what a supportive community. It's really awesome. Beautiful place too. So yeah, that's good. somewhere really I good. want to spend some time. Just like it's so outdoorsy, so much yeah. to do. Uh, so I'm sure the running do. is great. The biking looks cool. You have the river paddle board. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Looks like a cool yeah. spot. It's Good really tip. cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So now have... let's hear about your weekend. Oh. Let's stop talking about me. Okay. I do have more questions. I, I mean, you did. Okay. Well, ask your last question. Well, well, well yeah. Your... I, I need to know when the gauchers go on vacation, what's like goals? Like, what does this look like? Are you phone off on the beach, just mm-hmm. like eating, drinking? Colt rolled yes. home at the end of the evening, or are you like sightseeing? Do you have a li- do you have an itinerary? Okay, so I feel bad <laughs> admitting this, especially since Chris McClung is like a he's like a half and halfer. Like he likes to. I've never gone on vacation with Chris, but he likes to like see stuff and do stuff, but also relax. We are the most boring people. We do not have our phones down by the pool or by the beach. We don't know what time it is. We're the last people to leave the beach. It's always like dark, and we're still there. And I, it is truly like magical. And I was never a beach person because I don't like sand. I don't like to feel dirty. I'm like <laughs> not really into the ocean. And But my son is like for sure I'm going to lose him to some coastal place because he won't get out of the water. And he has stretched me so much. Like I've seen giant turtles and sea lions and all this stuff because of him because he's like, come in, come in. And yeah, I'm, that's what we do. We, now on this trip, Colt studied like Mexican history last year and he learned a lot about like the native culture. And so he wants to go one day and see some old ruins. And so we are going to do that. But otherwise, we're going to just be at the beach. Like that's who we are. We just sit there all day and we read books and listen to music. And Des, you would not recognize me. I can throw a football for like two hours and not get bored on vacation. (laughs) I will just throw the football for hours. I thought you were going to say you're going to come back so tan you will not recognize me. I'm like okay. <laughs> well, probably I have been like <laughs> like I'm a sunglass. Ghost. I've been working uh, yeah. out mostly on my treadmill, so maybe I'm well, actually. I don't normally get burned, and I am a little bit nervous because yeah. we've had a lot of snow, and I've been like working out on my treadmill a lot, so I'm a little bit nervous. I we we bring <laughs> like six too or hard, seven yeah. bottles. I know we have like six or seven bottles that were just delivered of the sunscreen that we like, and I'm like, 
uh, I have to be really careful because normally I'm not that. I always wear sunscreen, but I'm not worried about getting burned. But this year I'm actually worried because my skin <laughs> this is about as white as I've been as an adult. <laughs> so it's <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about that. Yeah, you guys got a big snowstorm, yeah? Yeah, it was huge. Was... Cole got two days off of school, which was amazing. Um, a little practice round. Yeah. On the fan. yeah. No, it was good. It was good. Actually, it was great because it was last week and I only had like one meeting on Thursday and Friday. And so we played in the snow and it, it was funny because we were trying to take advantage of those days and relax. And if I only knew what was coming, like we could have gotten <laughs> some stuff done. Um, but anyway, it was actually, I love snow days. I think they're so fun and I don't think he gets enough of them. So, and I'm happy, <laughs> it made me so happy that like he got a snow day and he was like, when are you going to be done with your work so we can go outside? And I was like, oh my God, he's 13. He still wants to hang out with me on the snow day. I love it. <laughs> so that was That's cool. Fun. Yeah. Soak him up yeah. while you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Now we are going to turn our attention to you because you did do a little thing this weekend called run a race. I did. Yeah, it was good. Um, I don't know. I was in Phoenix. Okay. This is the story that I will tell. I was in Phoenix prior. So it's two hours time difference. And then this is the closest I've gone to race day from traveling from Phoenix, flew home for a day, changed my bag, and then flew to New York on Friday evening. So the time change happened. We go from two hours to three hours different. Uh, and I think I just, I needed to wake up like half an hour earlier. I really needed to like mm. be a little more awake. My coffee didn't do, really didn't do what it was supposed to do at the time <laughs> it needed to do it. So I felt really good for like 10 miles. Like, all right, I'm locked in. Like we're got this little group. We're working each other. Uh, you know, Jenny's taking pulls in the front. I'm helping out. Um, Jackie was there. I can't think of her last name at the moment. And Jenny pulled away around 10 and so I was kind of by myself, but I could kind of see her. I was still working at it. Um, and then 11-ish, 11 11 and a half, heading into Times Square, I was like, I have a little GI distress. Like not, it wasn't crazy. It was more like, I was trying to think of it just like a rock tumbler, where you're like, there's just <laughs> extra stuff going around and this isn't super comfortable. And like, I just... I don't want to push too hard, you know, like this isn't an emergency, right. oh, but no. you don't want to push too hard. I was like, I'm not shitting my pants for to run 112. Um, so no. I was managing that about the last mile and a half. Um, it was fine. Get through the finish. Pretty solid day. And then uh, I see Jenny. She's super jacked because she ran a great race. Those last couple of miles were phenomenal. She's like, oh, give me a hug. We're chatting for a couple seconds. She's like, come on over. Uh, George is taking pictures. George Hirsch is there. Super nice. Works, you know, board of the NYR for so long. I feel like I owe him an apology because, you know, he's like, let's take a photo. And um, he, he hugs me and he like squeezed me oh, a no. little bit. Oh, no. the, I'm like a, a tube of toothpaste all of a sudden. <laughs> like this wasn't a problem prior, but this is getting, you know, dangerously close. And so you're like, abort, abort. <laughs> <laughs> we take the photo and he's like, oh, Nana's here. She went, let's get her. And I'm just, I just walked off. And I was like, I need to, like, I just didn't say anything. I just left. Um, and there was probably porta potties everywhere, but I was like, I'm going to the tavern on the green and I'm going to find a nice mm -hmm. toilet. Um, and I went in there and then was, I was fine. So there was enough time, but I feel like that last mile and a half could have been better. Um, but all in all, a pretty good race. And so I, I, I mean, I think it was pretty, pretty solid. Funny. I didn't know about, I didn't know about the, that, that issue you were having. I'm just yeah. always impressed. Like how you always are solid. I can run 533 no? all day long. Yeah, you can. Someone posted Not your splits on social pastor. media. <laughs> and it was like, holy crap. Like, I just, I can't get over how in tune you are with everything. And I mean, like, listen, <laughs> that's such a bad feeling. Like, you were rock tumbling instead of prairie dogging, but they're both horrific. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're both it's horrific. And it's it does rolling affect around. your running. Yeah. No, you can't, like, you're not, like, you're very aware of, Rock tumbling can become a mud pie like that. So quick. So yeah. You cannot push. <laughs> and if you're running you have to like 12, keep it back a tiny bit. Yeah. And yeah. The, the men's leader, I hate, I hate this. The men this happened to me twice in New York. One was a terrible race. I thought this was pretty solid, but the men's leader's passing it and you're like, fuck, like you can't take the tangent anymore. You're like, please don't catch me on the camera. Like everyone's gonna be like, what a loser. She's getting passed by the top man. When did they catch you? In Central. It was like 800 to go. 
So I'm like, oh, okay. and I would like go in spurts where I'm like, okay, I'm real. Like I feel pretty good. Like Central Park, Park South. I was like, uh, I'm not back in the game. I can catch some people like put in a little move. And then I'm like, oh, no, we can. Let's yeah, but Central back Park, you got like, those hills. Yeah. That just, so, with the rock tunnel, <laughs> you can't risk that. <laughs> yeah. So we, we made it safely. Shorts, all good. Um, you know, Tavern on the Green needs a little touch up, but it's all good. <laughs> So it was a changing station, actually. It was like a room slash changing station. I was like, this is actually probably perfect, <laughs> just in case. Okay. So how has your body felt the last few days? Have you come off it okay? I mean, not the yeah. not the poop part, but like the race part. Well, no, after the, the poop, I was like really cold. I was like, maybe I have a stomach bug. I was like chilled off and I, I did not feel right for like a good stretch of the day. Um, so that was rocky. Well, that's tempo tummy. <laughs> that lasts. That shit lasts. Yeah, I don't think it was. I think it was the timing. I think it was like no. I think it's because you weren't able to go properly oh, yeah, to go to the bathroom. Right. But I'm just saying, like when you find yourself in that situation, like I've gotten myself in that situation from running too aggressively in a workout. Yeah, yeah. And then, but the, it's the, the rest the, of the day, you're. It's the rest of the day. The rest of the day, you're just <laughs> shaking. You got to be in your hotel room or by your bathroom or like, you know. It's I have like, a flu. <laughs> I can't really have a lot of fun. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no, I was good. I, it took me longer to get ready for brunch and then. I brunched, so that was good. Um, good. And, then, and then I left early. I was like, I got to get home. Uh, and then I recovered <laughs> fine. I feel like oh, the good. last couple of days were good. And then today, which is this three days out, um, I did a, a really nice long run. So back in business. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So can keep you. running 530-somethings all the way to Boston. I mean, <laughs> the, it's super impressive. I know that you would like to go a little faster, but like the fact that you can just lay those down no matter what, like I even think back to last year, you were doing this crazy book tour. Mm. I will never get over how well you ran <laughs> in Boston last year. I'm like, she is going to blow up. She, How does she possibly have any energy left? And you just lock into that pace and just ride it out and it's it's really impressive. It's crazy. Like I said, someone posted your splits and it was like 5.30, 5.30, 5.30. Not even like 5.32. <laughs> She's not. Nope. No. She said it was actually 5.33. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. Sorry. Um, but it wasn't even like a second off. It was just like solid. Yeah. It's, imp- it's really impressive. So the one, not just the bathroom story, but the one downside um, was I wanted, I kind of wanted Ryan to be there. He uh, had this bike race it's called the mid south and he always trains for it and it's it's insane it's a 50k run on friday and then a 120 mile bike race on saturday and he was preparing for it he was down in in phoenix like doing extra work and stuff and um he like pulled the plug on it sort of last minute cuz he was just he he hadn't he wasn't feeling good and it's like a 130 mile bike race like you have to have a lot of time in the saddle for sure so yeah like he wasn't um, callous. Like those, like the what's the thing between the, where they balance on the seat between the the, the dick and the the butt. Like you have to what's callous that? that. What's that called? I think it starts with the P. Is it, is it the perineum? Perineum. Yeah, yeah. So like you have to I callous so. that up. Those guys are like hardened. If you're on your bike all the time, and they have to like put. So he wasn't he, ready for he it. He wasn't callous for the race. He would have been a hurting boy, not just because of that, um, but the 50K plus the bike race, he wasn't prepared for it. And so I was like, oh, then you can come to New York. And he was like, ah, I kind of just want to stay home with the dogs. And I was like, oh, okay. Aww. But he, well, the dogs were probably yeah. happy. He, and he picked me up from the airport, which was also nice. And that's going to go into a story later, which this was, story was a sidebar, if you will. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, some All right. things must be told. Uh, I hate to say this, Chris. Note this. I'm letting my dogs out of my office because they're not as good as Stez's. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Yay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. My dogs, so Dez's dogs will like sit and just be quiet. My dogs, like they, I don't even know what they heard, a squirrel outside and now they're losing their minds. They're such little dingleberries, man. They suck. <laughs> yeah, they, they can be dingleberries. They're actually the best, but they also are annoying. Yeah. So now you're back in Michigan. I am back in Michigan, which is really nice. Um, but it's so cold. I'm not ready for the cold. <laughs> I was wonder- I was wondering because you've been in warm weather since what January? Yeah, like early I, January. It's, yeah, I've been waiting way too long in the day. I was glad this podcast recording was later because I I did my long run like I started at like noon. 
It's like, <laughs> it needs to be the warmest. Like, when's the sun the highest? <laughs> Will you stay there until Boston? Yeah, unless I, I literally yesterday, I, it took me so, I said I recovered well. I think I did mentally. The, the weather has been a challenge. It took me so long yesterday to go run. I put on my running clothes probably at 11. And then Ryan and I, he was like, just take the day off. Like, <laughs> I haven't gone out yet. And I'm like, no, I don't know. We'll do something. And I was like, kind of, I, I have an off day on my schedule if I want it. So I was like, maybe. And then at 5 p.m., we went out and ran four miles. I wore my running clothes all day and I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm impressed you win. <laughs> Me too. Like, I have, normally I'd be like, I have <laughs> to just like get up and go. Otherwise, yeah. I feel, yeah. Otherwise, I, I can't do it. I have to just like get up. I get ready. I get Colt ready for school. I take Colt to school and then I go straight from there. I either Routines drive back home and everything. get on the treadmill or go yeah. straight after I, yeah, drop them off. And the days that I like let it linger, like on a Saturday, if the boys are like, no, let's do this, let's go get breakfast or whatever. And then it's, by the way, I'm, I'm not training for shit. So just so we're crystal clear <laughs> here, it's just like a neurosis I have to run every day because I actually do enjoy it. But it'll be like three o'clock and Adam will be like, you don't need to run today. And I'm like, uh, it's been hanging over my head all damn day. And now I'm going to go do it. <laughs> So you do it. So, that's yeah. like, what a turn in the I do story. Do it, but I, I, like, <laughs> I, I do do it, but I, I'm like kicking myself the whole time thinking I just should have gotten up 30 minutes earlier and knocked it out or done it when they were begging me to go to brunch, been like, I will be ready in 40 minutes. And yeah, done. like after the run. Good for you. A lot of times I'm like, uh, it's just a recovery day. If you're doing a recovery day, I'm not doing any miles. But well, I listen, have, I'm not planning I'm on running to on. Mexico. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm not, I stopped running on vacation. This was, it was huge for me in 2019. I was like, I am no longer doing that. I am going to go on vacation and go on vacation. I would go on trips and I, everyone would sleep in and I'd get up at six o'clock so I could go and work out and be back and showered. And then they're waking up at eight 30 or nine and I'm ready and I'm not missing anything. And also, I was a professional athlete back then too, but <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. And so I'm a little bit nervous because I'm just starting to touch Colt's times and now I'm going to mm-hmm. take a week off. <laughs> You're just going to feel fresh. And then, I'll have, <laughs> and then like, I'll have a week to train and then the next week is the race. So it's probably not helping my destroy Colt goal, but no, I'm not planning on running to Mexico. And, and honestly, it'll be good for my knee too, because even though it is calming down, it, it, it could use a little break. Yeah. You got to get in the salt water eat yeah. just like really good fresh food yeah, and time I'm off sure. feet. I'm sure I'll be know? eating so healthy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, skip that part, but you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it is what it is. Like I, I know I realized this. I got really sick like a month ago and I realized I lost like a week of training and I was like, oh man, I was looking at the calendar and I was like, oh, I still have time. I have plenty of time. And then I was like, well, I'm going to lose a week there. <laughs> so it's not the most ideal situation, but you know. It's on, and I've announced it, and I've talked about it, so I'm just going to do my best. So we'll, well see what happens. you can chase down Ryan, who just asked for his 5K bib yesterday. Yeah, can I please have a bib? I was oh, like, what I do you think I he could get No, one. but he's going to run something so fast. I won't even see him. I don't know. He hasn't trained. Like, he's done long runs and stuff, but he was like, I can go like 630s probably for a really long time, but going yeah. faster. Ah, he's, he's He will be able to go faster, though. though. I think run. like if I do get it, I'm going to have to do it by going like 620, 610, 550. Like yeah. I I can't go out and just run 606 <laughs> pace the whole time or I will die. I'm like a – like I build, you know, mm. and then it, like that's – if I get it, that's how it's going to get it. If you if you guys are following me and I split 606 on the first mile, stop paying attention. I'm definitely not going to get his time. It's going to be I don't a think so. I think it's going to be like race day energy where it just like, you're like, oh my God, 606, that felt so easy because there's just going to be all these no. people around you. And then Trust someone me. like in a banana suit is going to go by you at two and a half and you're like, oh, fuck no. And then that you're going to run something crazy because you're not losing to something ridiculous, right? Just That's the, the first time I've done something indicative that I could maybe do that was Monday when I averaged like 302 for, no, no, 301 for, for 800s. Okay. okay, easy now. 
And my knee afterwards, I couldn't, I could barely walk. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm feeling better. Like at least I'm like, oh no, it's in there somewhere. But yeah, anyway, I, I don't know. And I'm going to lose a week, but it'll be good because I need, then you get the, I need to you'll get the relax. drop down from the altitude, have the thick air. Oh, yeah. You're ready. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's for 10 seconds a mile. Totally. I'll be good. Oh, All right. Man. We're keeping an eye okay. on that. That's fun. Um, love to hear yeah. about the training. That's good. So, we had some races recently. Do you want to talk about NCAA's? Have you did you watch them? Did you stay interested I didn't watch in them. NCAA's indoors? No, I watched track? it through like social media, short track, yeah, short track. I watched it basically through social media and then I would have like the live results, so I was watching mm-hmm. their their uh but I was too lazy to that is really horrible to admit, but I was too lazy to find it on ESPN on a streaming service. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't even know like I don't even yeah. know where it was. Um, I mean the, the standouts, there were a lot of standouts for me. I thought, um, the women's 800, Justine Whitaker, right? That's who won. That's her name. I hope from Stanford. I don't know. I just really like her. Like I just, I follow her on social randomly and I just think she's like a cool person. So super happy to see her win. Although I also really like the girl she beat who I'm not coming up with her name right now. Something Rose who I think is going to be a huge star in the 800 as well. And then in the women's 1500, the girl from Harvard, Ramsden, is it I should know cuz I called I talked about her at World Champs, but my brain is for right. ride right now, Maya maybe, Ramsden. I could not believe that she came back and won that because she had just been at the World Championships like running her heart out, mm-hmm. made the final. And then got on a plane and went back and handled the pressure of running. You know, it wasn't at Harvard's track, but it's in Boston where she lives. And then, um, and then obviously someone said something to us on social. Of course, we were impressed by Parker <laughs> Valby. I mean, yeah. Watch it. I, I mean, I did yes. watch her. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I, I didn't, I didn't turn it on either, but the results were crazy. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Just phenomenal. Yeah, I actually did go back and watched her 5K. Yeah. Um, and so I mean, she's double. Correct. Three five double, both races so fast. Yeah. And, you know, like 840 something low and then 1450 something, I think. It was a gap. I don't know. I'm feeling like were they heat? Was it a yeah. massive? Yeah, it was a massive gap. And and it it was just, she looked unstrained (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean like she looked like like, this is easy yeah yeah, I'm like prepping myself for when you know I'm ready to go 1430 or you know it's just right super impressive and I know that she's had some problems with injuries but she seems to have sort of figured that out by cross training a lot and I don't know I mean what a monster talent she is just got me thinking like okay if she could figure out why she gets injured she only runs like three days a week like literally, that's all she does. Would you? I mean, she works out. Do you like, even try crazy. to change that? Like, do you try to change that? Well, I, that's the thing is, it's like, like oh, she's working. Yeah, and that's not to say like the other day she's like lazy. She works right. out she's like crazy on an arc trainer, yeah. and she's. I feel like she's popularized the arc trainer, um, but she's like legitimately hardcore on that thing. But I was thinking, if someone could figure out why she's getting injured and she could run five days a week, I mean, what is the limit on her? It's almost scary to think about. Do you think if she went to five days, you'd have to do more recovery so she wouldn't be going? Like, do you think part of the success yeah, is true. the cross training where you're like, well, she just like, it's like working out four times a week. Yeah. Or I mean, I do think there's something to that. Like, yeah. Yeah. And like, every I'm not time doing as many out, miles, but you're doing a lot more workouts. Right. And, but every time she goes out to do like a run, even though she's, aerobically tired her legs aren't pounded into the ground right Mm -hmm. so i don't know maybe she's just on to like what we all should be doing is just running three days a week and arc training the rest but i don't know i mean she's just a phenomenal athlete it's been crazy i mean i've heard of her for a long time i knew she was good and um it's just one of those people you knew that if they could stay healthy things would click and i mean it's just it's crazy (laughs) to think it's and it's hard to imagine that she won't be a factor at the Olympic trials. Yeah. I can't imagine if she stays healthy that she won't be a factor. I mean, she's not being pushed right now. She's dominating everything. She's controlling every effort. So put her in a 1440 race 
with women that can run 1440, I mean, I don't know. It's hard for me to think that she isn't going to be a factor. Well, yeah. I mean, even just from the fact that she is a winner, right? Like I go at these races and I try and win. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think she would be intimidated by anyone because I go out there and I win. So having that be at the Olympic trials where you're like, okay, like everyone's very good here, but I, I win. So why not? (laughs) I think about the future too, like not everyone's an altitude responder, but she's never been to altitude. Like what if you bring her to altitude? Like what is in that body? I need to know. Like she's going to be good. (laughs) Basically, my conclusion is Parker Balby is very, very good at what she does. Well put. You summed that up nicely. I wish we had gotten that on the last episode to make everyone happy. (laughs) But you get what you get. But there we go. We got it. So the men's side, did you want – here's what's – I find myself watching the eights and the fifteens less, like mm-hmm. the collegiate level, and then a little. I start to like skimp a little bit at the pro level, but I want to get into them. So, did you watch I them? No. So, okay. I am a Nico Young enthusiast. Mm-hmm. I remember he ran at the Olympic trials in 2021, and I was like. He is going to be somebody and yeah. he's been so good and he's gotten flack because he hadn't won anything. But like you could just like, I just feel like he is so talented. So to be honest, I really was just paying attention to what Nico Young did and he won the three on the five. Have you been watching any of the workout videos that I think it's no. um, all access or there's like a new track all access YouTube channel that has some workout videos. His He's has he's had a few up that are they're so good. I mean, he just looks so comfortable and calm getting ready to run. Like he can run so fast up at altitude and then you yeah. bring him down to sea level. I don't know. I just I I've been following him since he was in high school and he kind of got a little bit screwed because of the COVID year and everything, but yeah, it's fun to see him put it all together. So I have to admit though, <laughs> that I didn't really pay attention to the men's eight and fifteen because I was really mostly paying attention to if Nico Young would win, and he did. Did you? No, same. I mean, you know, (laughs) it was the Nico Young show, and I was, like, aware of it because of the workouts, and it was just, like, can he put it together on the day? And Mm -hmm. We ran 1257 indoors, too, right? So it was, like, right. Like, and he ran 350-something low up at altitude in a full mile. It was, like, you knew he was in phenomenal shape right and he he just crushed it i don't i also don't know enough about the depth in the men's ncaa right now which is something i need to study i don't either so i feel bad and now we're probably going to get a comment that we we don't pay attention to the men but i'm admitting it i'm going to work on it yeah um you just know, collegiate I, in general. I don't know it as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't know college as well anymore either. And and part of it is because I don't call any college races. Like I would love to call the NCAA cross country championships, but that that broadcast is locked and loaded. They have their people. And yeah. so I don't pay attention as well. And and really I mostly pay attention to Colorado, who's had a rough couple of years. So I'm not really I don't really know what's going on. Obviously, I know about Caitlin Tui, who just went pro, and I know about mm-hmm. Parker Valby. And I know about Nico Young because I remember hearing about him in high school, but I really, it's, I know it the least. I actually feel like I might know high school better than college, which is actually really sad. <laughs> it's not sad. I mean, just follow what you like and what's interesting. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to pivot a little bit. I had <clears throat> another okay. race up next to talk about, but we've been talking about Nico Young. No, let's talk about the 10 first and then we'll go back to that. Did you watch okay. the 10? I didn't Any watch me- it. Okay, that's t- I just totally had fair. it like the live. I same, I was up for same it, principle, but I yeah, didn't, I didn't watch it. I didn't. I, this is really bad, but I just didn't want to pay for it, and so I was just watching the live thing, and it was clicking off splits, and yeah. Um, I was super excited to see how it would shake out, and it shook out differently than I thought it would, for the women anyway. Did it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean. I did win a bet with someone that you were a part of, actually. So I didn't totally uncall it. I I felt good that Rachel Smith was going to have a good race. I just feel like she's mm-hmm. on the upward trajectory. Like I just feel like every race she's a she's like not crazy better, but she's a yeah. little better. She's a little better, 
Yeah. And I'm like, give her two more months. She's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Like her progression mm-hmm. is, is steady. You know what I mean? Like it's consistent. And so I, I felt confident that she was, yeah, yeah, exactly. She's not like chopping off 50 seconds, but she's chopping right. off four here, three here, four there, five there. And so I was confident that she would have a good race and she did. She had a great race. I think she was, ugh, God does, we're terrible. We should have the results up, but she was like fourth or fifth or sixth somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. And I was interested to see how Kira D'Amato would do, obviously coming off the trials, switching gears pretty quick. And she did really well too. She finished right behind Rachel, I think. 31 lows. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was very interested. (laughs) I know. It's so fast now. God. I mean, the standard's 30-40. 30-40 is the Olympic standard. Don't jump ahead. Don't even get it started. We'll talk about that later. (laughs) Um, But I was very excited and interested to see what Alicia Munson would run because Mm -hmm. she ran 30-03 there last year. It was funny when I was had the results up. It had American record and it didn't have Alicia's time. Huh. I was like, dude, she ran 30.03 at your meet last yeah, year. Right. Let's get this. <laughs> she broke the American record <laughs> at this meet. Um, and I I well, I knew she was running there. And I originally thought she'd probably go for like 29.55. Mm-hmm. But then it, we found out that the pace lights were actually set at 29.37. And so I was really curious to see how that would be. Because that's a big chunk of time to take off when you're already running so, 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 so fast. Yeah. So her race seemed to fall apart a little bit, and then she ended up dropping out. And then she said later that she had stomach issues. Um, but I was, I kind of felt bad for her because that's – now that's in your head. Like no matter yeah. what the reason is why, it's still kind of there, you know, and she's so good. And I'm like, she definitely could have become the first American woman to go under 30 minutes, and that would have been really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to the old DNF thing where you're like, was it an excuse? But if it's stomach and you have physical evidence, (laughs) it's like, no, I feel pretty good about this decision. Um, Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's- And she already had the standard, right? Yes. So it's like when things started to go south, it's kind of like, well, I don't actually need this race like a lot of the other women in this race do. I was doing it to see how far I could stretch myself and have plenty of time to recover before the trials. But yeah. I don't actually need this time, you know? I think that's a big thing, too, like in setting the pace so aggressively. If you don't have that time already, you're way more conservative. And then you try to wind up the last three or four laps. And like, how right. fast can we go now? But why not take a big swing? Like that race is all about running really fast. Yeah. I mean, so- I haven't, I don't watch. I'm trying to think what they're called, OAC's um, workouts or anything. So I don't know. I just saw her run indoors and she looked very fit and everything. I thought that was a really aggressive time, but I also felt like, well, they're not going to say that and set it up if if the workouts haven't been there. They're not going to be like, well, she's training the same as last year when she ran 30.03, so we're going to go for 29.37. Just cut across the infield and nobody will notice and then you can (laughs) Yeah, no one will notice. It'll be fine. Um. But so, yeah, but the woman that won, you you called that. So, yeah. so Des and I, I was in a bet with my friend CB, and she included Des in it. And basically, we each picked five people that we thought were going to be in the top five. And whoever had the most people in the top five won. And, but she created a rule where I was, Des was allowed to pick someone that wasn't in my top five. And the winner was not in my top five, and Des picked her. So I ended up winning the bet. We ended up winning the bet. Teamwork makes a dream work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. It really worked out well for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I can't. Uh, the name escapes me. I don't have the results. I know. Up. So Ethiopia. We should have had the results up. But anyway. Um, it was yeah, a good I mean, race. she was coming off of a 65-minute. I'm, I can't remember the number. Uh, yeah, half. I think that's what you told me. In, like you were like, you should pick her. She's coming off a 65 minute half. I was like, oh man, I'm I'm glad yeah, I got to have good. you on my team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and also Carissa Schreiser was out there, which was good to see her back out running. That. Yeah, like she's so talented and she's had a couple of really rough years of injury. And so it was good to see her just get back out there and in there. And, and I mean, I don't know what she ran, something that blows my mind. She ran like 31 something, I think. Um, 
I'm sure she was hoping for 30, 40 or, or needs to, or doesn't need to, but is hoping to get that time. But I was really mm-hmm. impressed that that's your first race since God knows when. I can't even remember. And you you step out and run 31 something. I mean, it's not shabby. Nah, 6, 31, 04, I believe. Chris's yeah, jokes in the chat go. over here. Um, Some oh, information you, Chris. jokes too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun race. I think... Let's talk about the men first, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Or ask some okay, questions well, the men, about it. Yeah, the men's race was interesting. They were chasing sub-27 because that's the standard, Olympic standard is sub-27. Um, I I went back and watched like the last few laps of both races when they went on YouTube. Do not I was finding out I'm really cheap and I just don't want to pay for it. And I understand, I understand, I understand when the fans tell me they don't want to pay for Peacock. I get it. Okay. But Peacock <laughs> is only $5.99 a month. The this other service is more. And I just, you know, whatever. So they put it up on YouTube, which was great. And it was interesting to see. Grant Fisher looked amazing. He looked super mm-hmm. calm. I think he was ready to go run 26, 50, whatever by himself, but he didn't have to because he had company and he had people that were running with him. And I wasn't surprised to see him kick and win at all. I wasn't surprised to see him run sub 27. I was happy for him because he didn't have the standard last year, so he didn't have it. And so I was glad to see him click that box. But for me, the story was Nico Young, after winning these two NCAA titles, a late entry into the 10, I think he was second. And he runs the Olympic standard. He runs sub 27 in his first ever 10,000 meters. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, take some time off now. Yeah. That's that's, <laughs> no, my, to rest. that's my next question. Because, I mean, there was a number of men who broke 27. It was a crazy race. Um, you can look up the results. But for me, again, Nico Young is a highlight. And the question for me is, like, what do you do with the rest of his year? Like he's so sharp, yeah. he's so fit. How do you, are you, do you want him to run conference or NCAA? Mm-hmm. Do those matter? Do they matter from the team standpoint? Like, is there a title on the line? Does he care about that? Or is it, hey, Olympics and let's just tune out everything else? Like, how do you get him Well, ready let's talk about it. What would you year? do? I mean, what would you do if you were his coach? If I were his coach, I don't know. I guess like what... That's such a tricky question because what Mike Smith works for NAU, his mm-hmm. job is to make that team ready um, to go win. I mean, I don't know what his contract looks like, but I'm sure he's incentivized for conference champions and NCAA champions. And um, I don't know if the regional has any implication. I don't even know if they still do regionals. I think they do. I Maybe, not the 10, Maybe not the 10,000. Maybe not the 10,000. I don't think but, they do the 10, but yeah. I don't know. So I guess I'd have to look at the schedule and then decide like how can you make that work go into the trials. But for me, if I were a coach and I had an athlete of that caliber and he had a really legitimate shot of making this Olympic team and doing well at the games, I would put the collegiate stuff aside and say, this is about the athlete and circle the most important thing which would be Paris final and then work backwards let's get him on the team and then how can we use the NCAA to get him ready for these moments if he got an invitation to the Prefontaine Prefontaine Classic would you have him race there over like a conference meet no too soon I don't think he needs it I don't think he needs it. Like he's proven he can run with a, the, you know, Grant Fisher is one of the best runners in the world. Grant Fisher was fifth in the Tokyo 10,000 Olympics. Grant Fisher was fourth in the Eugene World Champs 10,000 meter finals. So he's proven he can run with the best in the world. Um, if I'm his coach, I'm thinking the Olympics are only every four years and the Olympics changes your life forever. And NCAA title is super great and it gives you opportunity to not like being an Olympian does. So how can we help him win maybe an easier-ish title, like a 5,000 title, which isn't necessarily easy in the moment because it's a hard and it's a grind and it's a really deep field, <clears throat> but it's not as hard on the body necessarily as running a hard 10,000, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I, I, you know, who knows, but I do not see three people beating Nico Young in the 10,000 at the U.S. Yeah. Championships. We just saw the men's best 10,000-meter runners from America. Everyone but like Sean McCourty lined up. 
and he totally got Totally preview race, right? A hundred percent. So it's like, is, are, is two more people going to pass him as long as he's healthy, if he's in the shape he's in right now? No way, in my opinion. So that's his ticket to the Olympics. It's the 10,000 plus. It's first. You can run the 5,000 as a safety net after. So how do you get him there as fresh as possible for that 10,000 without letting NAU down? I don't know. Like that yeah. that's why I was like maybe he runs the 5000 instead. Super and focuses shoes on that. Don't wear spikes, <laughs> wear his super shoes. Collegiates can do that, right? Can they, oh, can they, can they can run in the Yeah. He so. can. Yeah, and they can qualify for the US Championship in super shoes, but yeah. then can't wear them at the US can't Championships. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's actually a pretty good idea, Des. You should run that by Mike Smith. I'm sure he's going to call any second and be like, what do you think we should do? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's obvious luck that has got him this far and his team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if he needs the pros to step in. Yeah, we're, we're happy to help you out there. Give me a call, Nico. Yeah. I've never even talked to the guy, but I'm like weirdly invested. And I think it's because I... I stopped following high school for so long, and then I kind of started paying attention. And he was the first athlete I started following again. Well, that he was, like, was at so that level. exciting too. Like he was really, yes. really good. And you're like, oh, how could you yes. not follow this kid? Right, yeah. totally. And then he ran in the trials. You know, when he was so young, and it was ex it was just exciting. And so, I don't know. And and you can see how hard he's working when he runs. I think I like that too. Like I will yeah. say, Grant Fisher is like totally on top of everything. Mur, 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 just executing and Nico's like fighting but yeah. I like that about him he's like really right. like you can see it on his face you can see it in his body I don't know it's, I, there's something about seeing some not that Graham Fisher isn't giving it his all but I do think Graham Fisher was like really on top of that effort and Nico is in uncharted territory he's never run a 10,000 before I mean he hasn't cross country but not fair. on the track so yeah that's fair different beast and that's well a, yeah Mike Smith give unique. us a call give us a call <laughs> we'll help we'll help you we'll set up the year for sure um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's going to be fascinating to watch and just see how, you know, he seems like a team guy too. So I don't mm -hmm. you know how how do you balance that as a person who wants to be there for your team and do certain things. But, you know, yeah. maybe it's not that important to NAU either. They're not exactly powerhouse in outdoor track. Right. I don't think of, I don't, I don't know what their throwing situation or field situation, you know, are they just, dis yeah. can they win it with just distance? And then is that important? Probably not. Um, yeah, but yeah, but even just being this ready at this point of the year and then, okay, how do you stretch that out? Cause you're right. That's the thing. I'm like, again, I'm not his coach. I don't know him. I've never met him, but I'm like, everybody now let's take a chill pill. Yeah. Let's just like go back and do aerobic running. Let's not put on spikes for a month. Like you have all the goods, you have all the tools, you proved you have them. Let's just go and do long runs and strides. That's it. And then in a month, we can sharpen, start sharpening up again. But let's just like take some time um, because I get worried when someone is so sharp so early and extending that, especially like the 10,000. I mean, that's that race is so physically but mentally tough, right? So yeah, I, I'm just sort of like, take a break. Take a break from intensity. Yeah. I was going to throw another hypothetical like – the, he needed those in the NCAA championships. Like he needed those wins, I think, mm -hmm. for his, I hate the word legacy, but like for his situation yeah. in the NCAA to kind of prove that he lived up to the hype, so on and so forth. And now so, does he just go pro? I think he will. I think he said he's, you know, at least after the track season for sure. But do you, if he doesn't get those indoors... Like maybe you just go easier and build into the season and really peak once for outdoors, but he had to get the 10 standard. So he still he had, had to get, be and he ready. needed the titles, right? But he could get he those outdoors the in theory. Yeah, and that's then true. Go that's back true. to back. Is that harder or is it tougher to like be really hot and then stay hot or the come thing back about down and like try to just trying to. I know what you're saying. I think the thing about like trying to nail it, like win an NCAA outdoor title for the first title and then like roll that into the trials. The hard thing is like he hadn't won a title yet. So yeah. even though we all knew he could do it, he hadn't done it. So there's all that pressure of like just getting it done. And I think that's way more emotional and, um, and mental energy than now he's done it, right? Like that mm -hmm. is done. He's proven he can win. He's proven he can get the job done. And now he's not carrying that 
mental and emotional energy into the outdoor season. You know what I'm saying? It's gravy. Yeah. I, I <laughs> like this plan. I just really want him to back off now. Back off. Just do long runs. Get lost in the forest. Do some strides here and there. Yeah. But just drop down in intensity because he's been hitting it for a long time. Yeah, that back-to-back is wild. I mean, I don't even know if we actually mentioned that. To go from NCAAs was a week, right? It was a week. So 3K, 5K, 10,000 over a week and maybe 10 days. Yeah. Yeah, I think in eight days. Take a break. Yeah. Get a little out of shape. Just a little. (laughs) Just a little. Yeah. Yeah, just a tiny bit. All right. That's our advice for Nico. Um I do want to, we talked about not watching the broadcast, which I'm fine with. Uh, I do have my pro tip for FlowTrack purchasing is back in the day, and I don't know if it's like this anymore, but I don't like to give my credit card to subscription places that may or may not cancel. Like if I have to call Mm. you up to cancel, I just, I never sign up. So that's my, my gripe for the initial sign up. So back in the day, if I were going to watch, uh, you know, like a month and wanted it to be sort of a la carte, I would get a prepaid credit card and sign up with that so that after whatever the amount is on the card, you know, you're, you're canceled because your card has no more money on it. And that's right. how I do those subscriptions. But that that's, aside, that's um, what... What do you think about the time of these races? West Coast, they started super late. I was asleep. I was getting ready for the New York City half. There was that that weekend. There was the LA Marathon. There's the 10. And is it the athlete's job to run at a time that's a little more optimal for viewership? Or do they just run in the best possible conditions and the viewer needs to watch if they want to watch. And if they don't, puh. like what's the give and take there? I think if it's like a big meet, like a Prefontaine Classic or, you know, a Diamond League meet, let's put it in the day where people can enjoy it and make it a part of the experience. But when you're talking about something like the 10, which is solely set up to get Olympic standards out of the way, I think the that for me anyway, I'm like, it needs to be the priority of the athlete of the perfect weather conditions and the perfect situation. That needs to be the priority. And if you're hardcore and you really want to watch it, you'll stay up and watch it. And if you, and otherwise you'll watch it the next day. And, um, you know, for me, it's like, I almost feel like I watch too much track. So I use the like pay thing as an excuse because I ended (laughs) up watching them anyway. (laughs) Right. But I'm just like, you know, it's like a Saturday night. And I know if I open my computer and tell Adam, oh, I'm watching this 10,000, he's going to be like, what the hell is happening? Shut your fucking computer. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm curious on your take. I kind of think big, big meets, let's put them in in a a compromised position, which is like good for people, but also later in the day or whenever the weather is going to be better. But for these really hard efforts where they are chasing the specific time, like let's make it the best weather possible for the athletes. And that's if that's at 10 at night on the West Coast, then that's what it is. But what is your take? No, I agree across the board, which this is maybe this is controversial and we might argue here, but does the 10,000 meter have a place anymore on, in track and field? Like the, the qualifying opportunities are just not there. There's like three chances mm-hmm. to get these time standards, which are bananas. And it's it's hard to get viewers. Um, I think that Mm -hmm. the only really exciting 10,000 meters can be in the Olympics, but I don't know, like, is that enough? Should, is it too long of a race to be on the track anymore? I don't think it is. I think where we have failed this particular event is that we have just taken it out of so many meets because we say no one will watch. It's super easy to do it at the end of the meet or the beginning of the meet. It's 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 really not that hard. If you want to have your TV window and you don't want to put it in there, put it before the TV window starts or afterwards. Um, I think that the I love the ten thousand. It's probably my favorite event, mm-hmm. and it's hard to describe. But it there's so much that happens, and it's it's the five thousand and twice as long, but just this much slower. It's just a hair slower, right? 
And then I love championship 10,000s because they're playing all these games and they're constantly playing chess and they're waiting for when they can break. And I think that falls on someone like myself to explain what's happening and to let the audience know why this is so hard, why it's cool, why it's tough, why they're amazing. But I do think that world athletics has really failed 10,000 meter athletes by not pushing Diamond League to keep it in the venue. You know, Uh the Diamond League has gone to this 3K or 5K situation. And so no one's holding a 10K. And so now they're really, you know, now the 10K becomes a time trial, becomes a time, time trial at the 10 or at the night of athletics over in Europe, they have one. And then that's it. That's it. It's just a time trial. And then if you're lucky enough to make your Olympic team, then it's a cool, exciting event. But so we're really only seeing it cool and exciting once. Mm -hmm. So right now, as it stands, I understand why there isn't interest in the 10K, but I think that's a failure on our governing body. Totally agree. I mean, I think it can be one of the most captivating events on the track. And it's it's not just, I think it was Michael Johnson a couple of years ago. He was like, well, it's 24 laps of jogging and then a sprint. It's like, no, you don't understand. That's if you're not <laughs> educated, right? And yeah. like, all, all respect to, to him, obviously, but- that's that's someone who's not doesn't understand the intricacies of what's happening and how fast they are actually running. Yeah. Even in those 24 laps, they're still running so fast, you know? And so that's that's a throwaway comment to me. Like he's he's he says a lot of stuff I agree with. Meh, I'm not gonna agree on that one. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Just like I would never pretend to know the intricacies of a 200 or or a hundred. I got in an argument with Otto and I was like, well, in the hundred, like you don't understand it. Cause we were trying maybe I already said this, we were trying to predict who was gonna win stuff. And I said, it's a lot harder for me than it is for you. And he's like, what are you yeah. talking about? And I go, as long as your people get out of the blocks, you kind of know what's going to happen. <laughs> and like, he what? was like, oh, he was like, lit me up. And I and I appreciated it. Yeah. But like what I was just trying to say is like in a 10,000, in a 5,000, in a 3,000, in a 1,500, there's so many variations that can disrupt the race. And so it's not necessarily who is the fastest human on earth right now that's going to win in that event. There's so many other factors. And that's why it falls on you and me and everyone else explaining that to the audience of why, yeah, this person is 10 seconds faster than everyone, but they ended up fifth. Why? How did that happen? Well, this is why. This is what happened. Because the distance races, there's so many layers and so many different things going on. I apologize. I didn't realize that there was more going on in the sprints as well. But like I said, it seems like as long as they get out of the blocks good, we know what's going to happen, which isn't true. Don't write me hate mail. Please don't. I don't want to hear your comments. I know that's not true. And Otto already told me. But there's so much more time for things to go wrong or right in distance running, right? There just is. Short stories versus long form. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the coolest things that happened to the 10,000 meters was the weather in Eugene at the last trials, they had to change the time because it was just crazy hot and it was unsafe, Mm -hmm. super nice. Um, And, but there was still a TV block that they set aside for the 10,000. And that was awesome because uh, of course you have your commercials in there here and there. I think they might not even have done that, but it was, you know, a long form. You got to watch it play out and learn more about the people. And we're always talking about the broadcast. It's so hard to put in any kind of, personality or like tell like the athlete's story in a better way. It's a 1500 meter. You have four minutes. You can plug one line in there. Maybe. Okay. Right. 10,000 meters. You can really set the stage, tell the story it develops, and then you get this explosive finish at the end too. So it's, it's, I don't know. I think it's kind of perfect for TV. Um, yeah, but that would be the whole meat. (laughs) Yes. And that's the problem. Right. And so yeah, I'm not totally sure what the solution is, but but completely taking out of the Diamond League is not it, because it will it is dying out now. Now we are seeing the death of it. Even though we're seeing world records in it on the women's side and, and we're seeing progress in it, it's it's dying because no one understands it, no one sees it. It's not a part of the circuit, and so Seb Co, I know you love me. Put it back in, force at least half the meets to have it. Yeah. And let's get a storyline going. Let's get. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's frustrating to see it. It is It is dying and it's sad to see that. Teardrop. All right. Well, <laughs> holy smokes. We've killed a lot of, I didn't even get through I know you had list. so many things to talk about and we're not getting to any of them. <laughs> we can save some of this for later. The next one yeah. on the list is World Athletics in a Series of Boneheaded Decisions. Um, 
what the fuck is going on at WA question mark. And there's some stuff in between there. So maybe that's a teaser for the future. We'll yeah, see if we get to I that think that could not. be a whole pod right there. <laughs> um, do you want to do a top five or do you want to talk about a controversial travel question? Or do you want me to tee up the game? Um, I didn't even read your controversial travel question. This is a thing that happened to me, and I like we talked about it. At okay, the top. let's talk about that. Let's let's give out a few happy things. Maybe we just do a top three, and then we'll talk about the game. We'll end with the game. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So the the <laughs> controversial travel question. I think people are going to hate this, but my question is this: You're on a flight that's delayed. No problem. You wait. Take off. You land. You're like an hour and a half late. You're pulling up to the gate and the uh, flight attendant comes on and says, hey, we have a lot of tight connections. If you're at your final destination, will you please stay seated while those with tight connections exit the plane so they can make their next flight? Is that an acceptable thing to ask or not? I'm going to tell you something. It (laughs) is acceptable, but it's not in our society because everyone fucking pretends they have a connection. I have been this person numerous times where I stay in my seat and lo and behold, the entire plane has a connection. (laughs) And then I'm like still sitting there for like 25 minutes and I'm like, what is happening right now? And then when I finally am like, well, I'm just going to get out there. I like block someone who actually does have a connection who's in the back of the plane. (laughs) So our society sucks. Um, But I'm desperate to know why you're asking this because what happened to you what happened this just it just happened to me and i i my personal opinion and i agree 100 percent. this it, no one listens to it anyway so it's kind of a silly request um every now and then it's pretty good and you're like wow i i shouldn't be a dick i shouldn't be a dick just stay put um but <laughs> my problem is i i feel like the airline has already inconvenienced everyone on the plane that's true And now they're saying our connections, flights, are more important than your next connections, you know, people waiting for you uh, and a pickup. But you know those people are like, you can't park here, drive around, you know, out there. Those connections. They're not nice. um, Maybe you have a connection with the bathroom. Uh, Maybe you have a connection with a parking structure that is going to roll over into another, you know, $40 charge for the next day. There are all kinds of connections. Everyone's trying to make, no one's living in the airport. So everyone has a connection. Now, the one thing that these folks have control over, not all the other connections, but they do have control over the flights. So they could say, we're going to hold all the connecting flights for 10 minutes after the last person exits the plane. So that's my gripe. And it's just, it's ridiculous, but it happens all the time. Here's the kicker. So we were delayed an hour and a half out of, uh, it was JFK. Land, we get to Detroit. Hey, please wait. (sighs) Fine. It's okay. I'm home, close enough to home. Oh, uh, there's no one at the gate. There's no gate agent here. Um, It's not ready for us. And then it's another 30 minutes. And like, okay, like wait for the people for the connections. Like they're not making it. (laughs) <laughs> right maybe right. maybe they are here. But, <laughs> like you right. clearly didn't do anything along the way to help this um so maybe you hold those planes or put them in a hotel it's super grumpy yeah. so i'm sure people are gonna be really upset most people are very polite and they're like i can wait like i'm closer to home than the next person that needs to get on another flight yeah but it still sucks and it sucks <laughs> because ha- most of the time you know only about 25% at best of those people actually have a connection they're rushing for. Yeah. I I have to say that traveling makes me just hate people. People are <laughs> so rude. Yeah. People will just like cut in front of me here, cut in front of me there, like as if I don't exist, you know, like I'll be standing in line, but yeah, I don't know. It's just wild. And then people, you know, getting out of the seat, like if I am not like backpack on ready to jump out into the aisle People will just blow by me like I'm not even there. And I'm like, have my backpack on, but I'm like, you know, not aggressively yeah. pushing my way out. It's it's gross. Yeah. Like, I I really, I like to travel with a carry-on because I don't like, I, I travel in and out of Denver, which is the slowest luggage receiver <laughs> of all time. Like, I hate it. I really hate having to check a bag. So I always travel with a bag. 
and it's small. I have like a little Wazelle duffel or I have a small roller. It's not like one of those like people coming up and they're like, well, it fit on the last flight. (laughs) (laughs) It's real. Yeah. And I don't, so you obviously have great status. I have pretty good status. So I get to board in group one and they have a line. So you can line up way ahead of time in group one before they even start boarding. And I was always like, why do people do that? That's so annoying. Well, then this year alone, twice I've gotten on and there's no room for my bag, even though, even though I'm sitting in like row eight, like, like everything around here me is yet. already, yeah, everything around me is already full. And they're like, oh, well, we'll have to bring it back to the back of the plane. And I'm like, what? Now I'm going to have to wait. You know, I can't go, you can't, yeah, you're the fish swimming the wrong way. And so now I've become that person that as soon as I see a couple people line up, I'm the asshole that goes and lines up, but it's because other assholes force me to be that way. That's airline and uh, travel in a nutshell. That's just Ugh. flights. Yeah. Okay. That was I my gripe. It. And I think okay, that a lot a of people, one. people can weigh in. I want to hear what people think. Cause obviously it depends on what side of the connection you're yeah. on. If it's at home or if, if I were connecting to an international flight, and we were having this conversation, obviously I'd be like, eh, and they all stood up and I was pissed and they should wait for me. Um, but you know, yeah, know. that's not what happened. So I'm griping about the other side today. So weigh in on the comments okay. on YouTube. Like let me yeah, know. What let you us think. know. Um, and let's do a top three. Okay. I, I had one <laughs> and I forgot it. <laughs> I'm going to say for one, that it's cool to see the younger kids running fast. Like, yeah. like seeing Parker Valby and Nico Young like already hitting good times and knowing they're going to have a cool transition. Like my transition from college to pro was a hot mess. And it's cool to see them like not being afraid to chase. Like I remember thinking like as long as I was the best in college, that's enough. I don't need to be worrying about what they're doing. And I'm impressed seeing them like run these times and chase after these big goals that are are maybe no other people would think are two or three years away. So for the youngins, I'm saying you guys are awesome and you guys are going for it and it's really cool to see. I'm gonna just put a little uh ash not asterisk, but like a little sidebar on that or a little note for it. If you're not one of those people running fast and showing that it's gonna be a super easy transition keep at it because I think for 100%. the majority of people, like you just said about yourself, it doesn't happen for a really long time. So it doesn't, if you're not clicking right now or you're thinking, oh, I'll never get there, um, don't give up because you can absolutely get there. There's a gajillion paths to the next level. Yes. So keep chipping away. I agree. Um, all right. Number two, I'm going to go back a little bit on this because I owe someone kind of an apology. So my number two is Katie Kellner. Um, when we did the post race, post trials show, we had a few drinks and I was talking about the dog party and I was like trying to go through, it was late in the pod and I was trying to go through everyone who's at the dog party like pretty quickly and like give a quick CV about the person. And it was towards the end and and I was just like, and then there was just other people there that like nobody cares. And I, I kind of just brushed it off and it was only, uh, folks who didn't have a dog and then i believe jackson and katie kellner who i was like and nobody cares but what i was trying to do is get to the end of a long story and katie messaged me and she said thanks for uh, i'm now known in boston as the girl at the dog party that nobody cares about and i was like oh face palm like no 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 that's not what i meant at all so katie kellner a shout out to her for being at the dog party for having jackson but honestly just for being a great uh person and I've known her, I ran with her at Hanson's for a long time. She's still chipping away at it. She did the trials and I believe is coming back for Boston. So everyone should track her and follow her on Instagram and look up Jackson, who's super cute. And I'm sorry that I said that nobody cares. We all very much care about Katie Kellner. I love that one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're only doing three. So I'm just going to take the last one and say, I'm just going to embarrass you. <laughs> you were so under the radar into the New York half. I almost forgot you were running and you crushed it. And I know you had rock tumbling. There was mm. a lot going on there. Polished them. But it's it's just, it always blows my mind how good you are. And it's super cool. And I know that at some point you're going to get tired. You're going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore. But 
for all of us that ran with you, it is so cool seeing you out there and continuing to shake it up and continuing to make top 10 in these big events. It was awesome. I was like so happy for you. And it's just, it's fun. It's fun to see you out there. That's super kind. So. I'm, I know you're, you're horrified right now, but <laughs> a little it's bit. true. So All right, just well, deal with it. on my list. Uh, when, when you crush Colt, we're going to have a whole segment on that. So <laughs> okay. Get ready. All right. Well, this has been great. We got through half the itinerary or the, I don't know, script. Um, more next yeah. time. Thanks for joining no, us. No, wait. We have to talk about the game. <laughs> oh, no. I was checking out. I was signing <laughs> off. Um, okay. Do you want to tell the game? Okay. So- so as we mentioned earlier, we had this bet with our friend CB about, you know, the the race. And we ended up winning. We were right. But if we had lost, she had two words that we had to say during the pod. During the pod. And we took it upon ourselves today as a challenge to say them anyway. <laughs> and so the game is in the comments on YouTube and Instagram, let us know what you think the two words are that Carrie dared us to say if we lost. Which again, we won, but we said them anyway. And if you get them both right, we're going to DM you and you're going to get to tell us words to say in the next podcast. And we're just going to start having some fun with you guys. Please remember <laughs> that we have to say them and they'll <laughs> live forever. So don't make it so outrageous. Yeah. Um, and also keep that in mind if you had a moment during the pod where you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have like 50 people get it right this first time around. Um, <laughs> yeah, in which case all, we'll just yeah. pick our favorite, right? We'll yeah, have a, have yeah a good, for sure. Um, my, uh, profile we'll have photo. you submit a word and then we'll pick our two favorite. But um, yeah, just keep in mind if you win that, yeah, we have to say these out loud and we don't want to lose our jobs or anything. But yeah, so go back and listen to the pod now that you know the game. <laughs> And message us what you think, or just write in the comments what you think the two words are. And if you're right, we'll let you know, and you'll be able to submit a word for us to say on the next pod. So that's our game. It's it's very elementary, but we're excited about it. <laughs> Let's have fun. All right. And that, and that is a wrap. Okay. We have to text Chris that we're done. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, man. That was good. That, I, I can't believe how long that took. I know. I was like, we're like 30 minutes in. We got, we're going to get through this whole thing. Nope.